Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman with an update on the Analog Pocket. You might remember this device from a video I did back in December or so, where you can take your original Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games, along with Game Gear games with an adapter, and you pop them in the back here, and you can just boot them up and play them like the good old days, and they even have some cool screen effects here to replicate what the original displays look like. And one of the things that I love about these analog devices, because we've looked at others in the past, is that they are running with FPGA technology on board. And what an FPGA is, is a field programmable gate array chip. And these are massively parallel chips that can replicate the logic pathways, if you will, of original retro game hardware. Because remember, a lot of retro game devices were multiple chips working together, and you can replicate all that logic and have that logic work together the same way the original stuff did. And it allows you to get old games running on modern TVs with very minimal input lag and a real accuracy that is often hard to get with software, although not impossible to get with software. And what attracted me to the pocket was what attracted me to prior editions of Analog's hardware, because those devices would get these mysterious firmware updates that would magically appear on GitHub that would allow a lot more functionality to come into play. So what you're seeing here is some a video from my review of the NT Mini, which was an NES clone console initially, but it later got support for games off of SD cards, and then the ColecoVision, the Master System, the Game Gear, and a whole bunch of other 8-bit systems from the 1980s. And we've seen similar firmwares come down for some of the other consoles that Analog has put together. And a lot of folks were surprised that we didn't see that appear on the pocket right away, although we're starting to see it now. They've added a feature in the latest firmware called OpenFPGA, and right now there's a couple of cores available here that allow more convenient game loading along with a new system that the Pocket didn't ship with initially, but spoiler alert, I cannot get the Neo Geo to run on it. But I thought what I would do though is kind of go through this firmware and show you what it's currently doing and give you my thoughts on it. But before we do, I want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the analog pocket here with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what these cores are all about. Now, before we jump into these new cores, I did want to show you a feature of this new firmware that is pretty useful. They added the ability to do save states. So if you hit the analog button here in the middle and up on the controller, you can see it saves the state. And then if you go into your analog menu and go to the new memories feature, which is in beta, you can select save states that you saved from your game. So for example, in Solar Striker here, I can click on load and it will bring me to a different part of the game that I saved earlier. And this feature works on the original game cartridges like this one, but also on a few of the cores we're gonna take a look at as well. And that was a welcome addition here to get save states on here. So let's take a look at some of the cores you can run on here without a cartridge. We'll start off here by going into the open FPGA menu. And you can find most of the cores you just saw on the screen on this GitHub page that is maintained by somebody who calls themselves Spiritualized 1997. And this has the Sega Master System, the Game Boy and Game Boy Color, the Game Gear and the Game Boy Advanced along with the SG-1000. Nobody knows who this person is and these cores are just the binary files, not the actual source code. And there's another page that can be helpful, which is this one also on GitHub where a user by the name of Josh Campbell 191 is maintaining a list of all of the cores that have been released so far for the analog pocket. And as you can see, not all that many have been ported over just yet. Now, those of you who are familiar with the Mister know how easy it is to get cores onto it. You just run a script and it does everything for you. Here, the process is a little more manual. So you have to grab those cores off of that GitHub page, unzip them, and then you have to put everything in the right folder. So for example, this is the GBA core, and you've got an assets, a cores, and a platforms folder. And what you need to do is go over to your analog pockets SD card and copy uh, the GBA folder here, for example, into the assets folder that's on your SD card. And in some cases, you might need to find a BIOS file for the system that you are running. And then, of course, 
bring the games over as well. But once you do that, it'll show up on the menu and you can boot those cores up. So let's go ahead and load up the Game Gear core. And I was really excited for this one because I did not have the adapter for the Game Gear games and I have a bunch of Game Gear games I wanna play. So now I can. So we're gonna run the core here and I've already loaded in a Sonic the Hedgehog game onto the SD card. Again, no cartridge installed at the moment. We're going to click on the game and that will boot the game right up for us here as you can see. And there we go. So I'm gonna hit the start button here and just jump into a quick game. One of the nice things about the analog pocket is its display is light years better than what you had on the original Game Gear. I think the original had like a passive matrix color display, which at the time looked better than the Game Boy, but wasn't all that much better from a uh, performance perspective, especially when it came to motion blur. But here it is super crispy and looks spectacular. And I think it even sounds better too than the original. And of course this is an FPGA, so we've got uh, very fast and responsive controls here. And these spiritualized cores also support the save state function. So for example, I can hold down that analog button and push up and that will save a state. I can go over here to memories and I can go back to one that I saved a little bit earlier and just load it up. And this will work just like it would on a cartridge game. So you retain at least on some of these cores that are being added to the open FPGA framework, the ability uh, to get the same save state functionality. But that's not gonna be true of all of the cores that make their way to this platform. Now I did have to edit this video.json file that lives inside the spiritualize.gg folder, which is inside the cores folder. And the reason why I had to edit the file is because the game was initially filling up the whole screen but it wasn't in the right aspect ratio, so things were looking a little squished. So to fix it, you load up this video.json file inside of a text editor, and what you need to do is adjust the aspect uh, ratio here on this line from 160 to four, and this 144 to three, like it is on all of these other entries here, and then you save the file, and after that, the aspect ratio for your Game Gear games will be correct. But my only gripe at the moment involves the Game Boy Core, because as you can see here, it loads up the Game Boy Color BIOS when you load up an original Game Boy game, and your games are in color like they would be on a Game Boy Color, and there's no way to change how the screen looks here like I can do with a cartridge in the slot. So all of those cool analog filters are not yet available on these cores when you load things up. There's just no way to go in and configure anything. So you can, of course, use the button combinations that you could use on the original Game Boy Color, but you're not gonna get that green screen on your original Game Boy games that I am quite fond of. Although I have to say, this game does look pretty cool uh, with the default mapping here. Now, all of these cores seem to be loading games just fine off of the SD card that includes the Master System, the Game Gear, and the Game Boy games. The Game Boy Advance games are also running just fine off of the SD card. I was able to load up one of my favorites here, Wing Commander Prophecy, which is awesome to play on the Game Boy Advance. But like the other cores, you can't change the way the screen looks at the moment on any of these open FPGA cores. The one though that I'm having trouble with is the Neo Geo core. And I see a bunch of other folks on YouTube who've had much better success with this than I have. But every time I go to run this thing and I've you know, got all the games configured the right way, I follow the instructions to the letter, I can't get these games to show up here at all on my system. So I know people are getting this to work, but we're not quite there yet. The Neo Geo core here is the one core that did not come from this mysterious a spiritualized person on GitHub. This core was actually ported over from the Mister, And if you do get it to run, you'll see that it is working to some degree, but not fully compatible with the Neo Geo games like the Mister core is. And that's because there's still a lot of mapping and conversion that has to be done to get Mister cores to boot up on this device. It's not as simple as just bringing the code over for the FPGA because Mr. has a lot of other features and functions to it that those cores rely on. So even though the logic is transferable, all of the things that make the core run are not as easily transferred. So I think it's gonna be a while before some of your favorite Mr. cores make their way over to this new system. But I would expect in the coming weeks to probably get the Super Nintendo and the Genesis and some of the 
uh, old favorites there working initially, and then later on, maybe some of the more advanced systems like the Sega CD and whatnot. And another challenge that developers are going to have with the Pocket is that its FPGA is not as large as the Mister's is, and that will make porting over some of the more complex cores a little more difficult. And that might be contributing to some of the issues they're having with the Neo Geo core at the moment. But the people that work on FPGAs are super smart, and I'm sure we'll start seeing more and more uh, make their way over to this platform. And I think it'd be realistic to see the Sega Genesis probably come up next along with the NES and others. And I got to say, this screen looks so nice. And to be able to get all of these games running like this is just awesome. I used to play uh, Fantasy Star on my Game Gear with an adapter, and it's just nice to have such a clear and crisp display here uh, to revisit this game and so many others that I enjoyed playing as a kid. So we'll have more on this as more cores develop, but I did want to give you the update on this and my thoughts about it so far because I am very excited that we're starting to see some progress in getting a really fun and nice FPGA portable out there. Unfortunately, supplies on this are still really limited. Hopefully that will change soon. I know a lot of people are trying to get one of these and can't. So keep trying. Hopefully within the next couple of months, the chip shortage will be less of a shortage and we might see more components available and you can get a pocket for yourself. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.